Hello Goddess, welcome to Juno's in Shadow, a podcast and community for moms to explore various mainstream, holistic, and esoteric methodologies. Here we dig deeper, get out of the shadows, and empower the loving warrior goddess inside to shine our light bright. This episode, we are exploring quantum healing and hypnosis. As the name suggests, this is hypnosis and healing done on the quantum level, connecting you to your higher self as well as source energy from the earth and universe. Bernice Cruz is a practitioner of introspective hypnosis and beyond quantum healing. Using her skills and knowledge in energy healing and hypnosis, she creates a space for healing by guiding and facilitating your journey through self to help remove blocks, heal traumas, converse with your higher self and guides, or even explore past lives and the wounds or strengths from them you came into this life with. Healing yourself in this life by deep connection to self and the truth of your inner being, while also possibly accessing past lives, if that's where your answers lie. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Bernice, where we discuss quantum healing and hypnosis, past life regression, shifting your energy to remove blocks, truly embracing yourself, and my personal favorite, letting that goddess inside shine bright. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Maris. First, tell us a little bit about you and who you serve. Okay. Well, you know what? I am, I, I serve everyone. You know, I am here to serve everyone. I am a light worker. I am a earth healer and I am a nature lover. And so I believe that as a light worker, we're here to increase our vibration, increase our frequency, and share it with everyone. And I believe that everyone here is a light worker. We're all coming from, you know, different places, if you will. We're not from earth. We're all multidimensional beings. So, you know, from star beings and, and so forth. So it's, it's quite interesting. Beautiful. And what modalities do you practice and services that you offer within your light work? What is it that you do? or your main focus that you like to do the most? Well, there are two different modalities. The first one is I consider myself a multidimensional quantum energy healer. And I, what I do is I combine um, different modalities. And the first one is what we consider universal rays. Okay. And this is prana energy from mother earth. And I work with God, goddess, you know, creator source, first and foremost, on the healing angels, the ascended masters, and of course, the star beings. The universal rays, they raise your frequency and awareness, open and activate your chakras. And it's just not only the seven chakras that everybody's familiar with, because they're much more, you know, much I've more. I've recently been reading that there are more, so I'm not super familiar with that, but I've just started making that dive. So it's really exciting to hear that. Yeah, no, it is. It's definitely, it is exciting, you know, because we have the Raja, the life light, and the life light chakra is the one that we connect with our star beings. And we just bring it down, all the way down, and open and activate our chakras all the way down to Mother Earth. So this universal rays, you know, we remove blockages from your chakras, we balance your meridians and energy pathways and organs if, you know, if need be. I also remove lower vibrational energies and entities because <laughs> people tend to go, what the heck? I think I may have an entity, <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you might be reading a little sci-fi there. But <laughs> yeah. But it's just like you, I definitely understand like feeling like there is just this like negativity that's just stuck on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like this black cloud that's always following you around, right? Mm -hmm. So we tend to, you know, remove that. And also the universal rays uh, release unresolved karma by breaking or revoking vows and contracts. And everything that I do is through love and forgiveness. 
love and forgiveness because that's the focus of my work. And I, and I have other energy healing modalities, like I work with the Arcturians and some other um, star beings. But what I would like to highlight today is that I am a certified practitioner of both introspective hypnosis and beyond quantum healing. The inspiration for BQH comes from QHHT, which a lot of people are more familiar with. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, um, that stands for quantum healing hypnosis technique, which is a regressive hypnosis modality created by the late Dolores Cannon. And both of these uh, modified versions allows me the flexibility to use energy healing. So I use both of these, you know, energy healing and hypnosis, all in the comfort of your own home at this moment. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm lucky (laughs) there. Yes, it is. Energy is everywhere. We certainly don't have to be in the same room to feel it. So that's one lucky thing about right now. (laughs) Exactly. And what was your aha moment in your life that brought you to what it is that you do today? Was there like a spark or has it always been in you or? Um, What happened was about five years ago, everything came crashing down. My dad passed away in January. I was laid off from my corporate job, you know, been there for 20 years. Actually, I was doing the happy dance when this happened because it was sucking my energy dry. You know, you would come into the office, positive and then you leave at five o'clock and it feels like somebody just drained the heck out of you (laughs) yeah and then yeah and if you go home and it's not like the energy you need to balance that it's just like downhill from the rest yeah you're absolutely right because at that moment at that time in my life I was with someone you know for many years and I would come home and it's like he would suck me dry because he was so negative. Everything was like negative, negative. I was like, okay, coming from a corporate job, going home. So then my partner and I um, agreed to separate. We, you know, placed the house up for the market. My son was coming home from the armed forces. So everything just happened in a six month time frame, And I was just on autopilot. And I guess maybe in August, I was guided to go to this, what would happen life after death? And it was this weekend experience because I wanted to know what's up with my dad, (laughs) you know? Although I've seen him in my dreams and he will come, but I really wanted to find out if he was okay. And there was this lady who was sitting next to me and she, we exchanged numbers, email addresses, She started this three-year program, which I started that January, and it was life-changing for me. And that's where the energy and and opening up my channel started and connecting with spirit and and just doing a lot of inner work, inner child work, ancestral karma, clearing, loving myself a lot more. (laughs) That's beautiful. No, I like relate very heavily to that. That's very similar to how my journey started. My father died. It just took everything away from me because I'm I'm a Pisces son and I'm totally like out there. And mm-hmm. he's always been he's a, he was a Libra. <laughs> and oh he's my always God. been I'm a Libra. My dad was a Pisces. <laughs> oh wow. And he always was that like I get that like you live in that space up there, but hey get it together down here. Right. right. So he was always that thing, like kind of keeping me together. And when he died, I was like, okay, I need to like keep it together. (laughs) Keep yourself grounded. Right. Yeah. Yeah, And I was in a long distance relationship and my partner was was like, why don't you just move? So I, cause I was talking about how I can't live here anymore. I can't like live in this house in this, like, and raise my daughter here. So he's like, why don't you come here? So I moved and I have my two stepkids and I just was momming it 20, like that. I was like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be a mom and do it awesome. Do an awesome job, right? Oh my God. And beautiful. then, but after a while, after about a year of that, I was like, but I'm more than a mom. I was not feeling like unsatisfied in being a mom, but I was unsatisfied that I let myself with those blinders on, like, because I 
It was like, this is what I've got to do to heal. I've got to be focused and be centered and just get it done. After about a year of that, I realized that I've been ignoring all the other things though. <laughs> oh, and, that's, and here we are now. This is how, like, that is literally how this was born. <laughs> It's and like it's like that, right? When something comes crashing down into your life and it's like something has been knocking on your door, but it's very light. You don't hear mm-hmm. it until it gets louder and louder. And it's like, yeah, oh, really? yeah, because yeah, like, it was like, on? and like, I feel like, of course, I never, I, I feel strongly that it, the stars did not kill my dad, but he also died during my return of Saturn and my Saturn's in Capricorn. So I felt like very strongly when I realized that, that like, this was my message. Like, you've got it, go get it. Just keep it together. (laughs) (laughs) Stay on planet earth. (laughs) Usually my friends would tell me, Bernice, come down from wherever you are. Come down from wherever you are because I'm usually in the cloud somewhere. You know, those when you see those kids who are always daydreaming or that used to be me. Mm -hmm. Like literally living in my own world. I would be in my room, pretend family. (laughs) Um, Back on track. Now that we know how we both got to where, (laughs) to this moment right here talking to each other. Uh, what do you do to embrace your inner goddess? I'm inspired, and this whole thing is inspired by the Roman goddess Juno. She's known as like the protector of home and family, as well as Rome. She's that warrior, but also that beautiful mother with a long flowing gown. She's depicted in so many different ways, from like strong to feminine and I like to use this space as a place for moms to embrace or heal their inner goddess. So what is it that you do? What's your particular practice that you like that when you're feeling, oh, makes you feel strong again? (laughs) Well, you know what? I tend to meditate and combine that with prayer. You know, prayer and meditation is it's almost on a daily basis. Almost. I have to say almost because I don't do it every day. <laughs> there are times when I wake up, I'm like, oh, freak this. I don't want to do this. I got no time for this. <laughs> yeah. you know? But, um, or else I listen to um, music. It could be rock music. It could be, you know, Spanish music because I'm from, you know, a Latino background. and <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> Hello, Puerto Rican background here. Yes. And my Uh, father's father from Spain. Oh my God, that's awesome. (laughs) So yeah, I would just put on, you know, 80 Spanish music and belt one out in the car real loud and dance. I love it. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. Music, laughter. But there are times when I like to go in and soak in a nice hot tub. And one of the things, and and I just want to mention this to your Juno um, audience listeners, Mm -hmm. that what they can do to increase their vibration is to put Epsom salt and baking soda. And you can, you know, just soak yourself in there um, for like 10 minutes. And then right before you come out, pour some apple cider vinegar. And then you just like sink in all the way, bob your head all the way down three times, and then you come out. Oh, so, nice. Yes, yeah. I do. I'm a, I'm a bath freak and I do with the Epsom salt and I'm also huge into, I spend more on doTERRA than I should, <laughs> <laughs> but the baths are great. So it's worth it. <laughs> and you know, what's also great laughter. I'm always laughing. I mean, you, you wouldn't even know how old I am. I am ageless. Okay. I am ageless. We all are. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I truly, truly believe that my grandmother barely looks like she's in her 50s and like the most vibrant active before this was all going on was working with her church and like taking care of people like younger and older than her who couldn't who aren't as active bringing them to service if they couldn't make it or like bringing meals so like my grandmother is one of my biggest inspirations because she is she's actually we call her glamma (laughs) because she is she's just beauty and brains and that's right. like her life and, <laughs> and that's great <fine>. great combo <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and so in what you do in your work 
what's the most common thing that you tend to work with your Juno clients for the typical, like your mom energy? Well, it's interesting because a lot of the clients that come in, it's about loving themselves. They don't feel worthy or not feeling loved, not feeling worthy enough, not feeling listened to in the household. Um, like they don't have a voice, if you will. And a lot of the women, I say women only because they come in with sexual abuse. So there's trauma and, mm -hmm. and it could start as early as um, their childhood. So yeah, this, yeah. So, you know, and they come in here and, and it's a sacred and it's a safe place for them to be. Of course, I don't post those sessions online because I do have a YouTube um, channel, but I don't post them because they're very, very personal, yeah. if you will. <laughs> but those are the people that tend to come, you know, to me. So, um, the, and, and they ha there's a reason for that. There's a reason why they, they come. It's like, I believe that all those people who, who come into my life or who I tend to meet are mirrors, like you and I, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, they either reflect what we are missing or what we resonate with them because that's the, there's universal laws and there's two universal laws. So it's the law of resonance and then the law of reflection. So it's quite mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And um, I know we just spoke about what it is that you do for yourself, but are there any other um, practices or rituals that you like to practice to help bring some more light to the shadows within ourselves? within um ourselves so as a hypnosis practitioner um there's different techniques that i use um one is ericksonian hypnosis the other is forgiveness therapy you got role role change you got past life regression um because a lot of people want to come in and go oh man i want to know whether or not i used to you know was burn at the stake or something i was a witch <laughs> i know i was a witch <laughs> Well, you have to clear yourself in this life before you can go on that life. And then the other one is, of course, spirit um, releasement. So what I do there is just connecting you to your higher self and your guides from information and healing. And like I said, you know, it, it all comes through together through um, love and forgiveness. So every session is heart and energy based, just bringing you back into whole because, like I said, we are all multi-dimensional beings. So your physical, your mental, your emotional and spiritual aspects of self are all interconnected. And so when one of them is out of alignment, then it tends to affect, you know, other parts of your body and, and your quality of life. And, you know, it's just a domino effect. You have to listen to yourself because our bodies are our temple. So if somebody, you know, I don't know, your ex, you know, would scream at you or put you down or whatever it may be, you know, you may have felt that or you may have stored those energies in your heart or maybe in your sacral or whatever it may be. And then you go, oh my God, you know what? I have this, I, I don't know why I'm coming in with these cramps or, you know, I got this stomach ache and it just doesn't want to go away. So then we looked at, you know, when did it all happen? And that's where, you know, the connection is made. So it's all interesting. I love it. <laughs> yes. No. And it's actually the way you phrase that. It's kind of how I think about it. Like, your body is your temple and sometimes maybe like somebody or something comes in and like defaces it or like puts graffiti on there so you have to come in the temple is not a temple in this beautiful holy place with paint and toilet paper all over it we gotta <laughs> clean it up <laughs> exactly you gotta clean it up <laughs> that's funny absolutely true absolutely true and you know what's interesting i did a goddess meditation so now i started doing meditations and if you, if somebody comes in for a session, you know, I provide this meditation that I had created um, so they can clear their chakras before they come in. Ah. Um, so they can clear their chakras, um, have this like diamond light energy around them, connecting them for source down to mother earth. And then um, I also created a meditation for guess what? inner goddess <laughs> <laughs> beautiful and i think i um i was on your website and i've seen some of the meditations you've posted on your blog and i really do like those all right 
back to this past life regression. I want to hear a little bit more about this and what it's like and what you do, because I, like I said, I've been on your website. I read a little bit, but for those who are not familiar with it, some of them do think it's like, oh man, I want to know if I was burned at the stake, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah, or maybe I was in that space, you know, that spaceship or something. (laughs) Yeah. Starving. So so this is the way I, I, I tend to work. So we begin the session by sharing, of course, a little bit about yourself. What's your story? Because everybody has a story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody tends to believe their story because it's been created by their parents and their family and, you know, whomever they're in the school system and so forth. And then, of course, what your intention is for the session. So intention is very huge here. And I will put you in a relaxed state. And when I mean in a relaxed state, you do not lose consciousness, okay? It's more like you're in a dream hypnotic state, if you will. You're very comfortable. And then um, we will start opening up to your senses because many people may not be visual. Maybe they hear something or maybe they absolutely know, you know, oh, you know what? I know this. Don't worry about it. How do you know? I just know. (laughs) You haven't met somebody like I'm I'm kind of like there you go you see (laughs) and then I'm also a very like I'm a tactile person which is why like even when I do my readings like I'll have things in pictures in front of me but it's like words on paper in front of me make words happen in my head like it creates a different kind of connection so it's like I literally have to have like I have this I don't know what it it's literally a connection to words themselves in a way (laughs) Oh my God. No, that's great. Because a lot of people, like I said, it's like either tactile, visual, they hear, they know. And so we try to, you know, find out, well, I'll try to find out or guide them to find out which one of the five or six senses can work in in the session. So, and then um, I'll connect you to your higher self or your guides, or perhaps maybe, you know, one of your family members, maybe a guy who's passed over, like your dad or our, you know, my father as well. These are the folks, or these are the folks. <laughs> That's how they feel though. They're so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> these are the beings. <laughs> no, no, I like that though. That's how familiar you are with them. I like that. <laughs> They're you know, my folks. <laughs> They're just, these are your peeps. <laughs> They come and, you know, and share information um, with you. And it could be in color. It can be in symbols, because a lot of them come in, you know, um, symbolic pictures and, and things like that. So the bottom line is just really getting to the root cause of the present issue. And we'll explore either this life or the past life. And your subconscious or your higher self will take you there. They know where you need to go. So you have to come in with an open mind. Mm-hmm. You, know? you really do. You, you can't say, oh, but I want to go here. No, because if you do and it doesn't work, then they come out and say, well, you know what? This didn't work. <laughs> come in with an open mind. No expectations, right? Yes, be in and here for the journey, whatever it is. That's right. That's right. You know what? I was, um, somebody wanted to practice on me and um, find out about my galactic self. The funny thing is, I did go, I, I go under immediately and I went for him. I didn't go for myself. And I was on the spaceship with octopi, a whole bunch of octopuses. And I was like, what's going on? And then finally they said, this is not for you. This message is not for you. This is for him. (laughs) I was like, oh, okay, got it. But then at that moment, I don't know what happened when he, at the end of the session, he goes, Bernice, this is a new laptop and my laptop just went kaput. I don't know what happened. And I was like, hmm, it was all that high frequency. (laughs) I was just hearing you talk, but I wasn't able to see you. I was like, oh, well. (laughs) So um, in your work, you certainly don't have to dive deep into anything personal or reveal anybody's personal stuff. But I'd like to hear about a client or a time that you've worked with a client that touched your heart and really maybe changed the way you practice or maybe like made you think about what you're doing in a way that you weren't ready for. Well, you know what? I truly believe that 
each and every person that comes in, I learn from. That's really beautiful. Do. I like that. Yeah, no, no, but it's true. And I, and I grow from them. I grow from them spiritually and just the way I conduct my business, if you will. So like I said, each and every person that we're connected with, there's a reason why they're here. And so although they're learning for themselves because they're exploring their inner journey, you know, what's this pain or why do I have this illness or just people who are curious, you know, so a, a lot of people are curious. They want to come in and, and just know how it feels like. I learn from these folks. So, and, and I'm here to, to hold sacred space for everyone and help you empower yourself. And when you do that, I'm empowering my, myself. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. No. And I like, that's really what I love about the whole thing. Like with what I do with the life path astrology and what I do with here, I really do feel like it's just this, it's a healing exchange for everybody. It is. It is. But you know what I, 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 I have to tell you what I've learned from everything is to have faith, to have faith and trust in the unknown because a couple of years back, I shouldn't say a couple of years back, many years ago, <laughs> I always want to know what's the next step, what's going to happen next before I moved on. And I was, I had Archangel Michael come to me one time and I was on a, at the edge of a cliff and he goes, you want to know what's the next step all the time. He goes, why don't you just jump off the cliff? And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wait, if I jump off that cliff, that's it for me. And he was just testing me. And so guess what? I didn't jump off the cliff, right? Because I want to know. Next time it came about, I did. And I noticed that he was there just holding me and um, lifting me up. He goes, you see, you thought you fell, but I always, you know, was here to to hold you. And that's when I realized, you know, I just got to have faith and trust in the unknown. And yes. to allow and just be and just be and to receive. <laughs> that was hard for me. That was hard for me to receive because a lot of people say, oh, wow, that's a beautiful dress. And I'm like, oh, this old thing? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then finally some, you know, it's just say thank you and let it be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and I, I do, like lately I have been really feeling like the once you do say, you know what? I've got everything I need. That's right. And whatever it is that I don't have, I'm going to get it. It'll like, let's do this. It's okay. I've got this. And ever since I've really been embracing that, it's changed everything because it's true. I mean, I. (laughs) No, you're absolutely right. Because you know what? Just the thought of the abundance, because a lot of people, you know, say, oh, lack of abundance. I don't have this. I don't have that. But then they have to, it's their perception of things. Mm -hmm. They have to turn it around and go well, you know what? I am grateful for whatever I do have. And then you'll see everything just growing and expanding. And, and so many miracles happen because of it. You know, it's just a small little things that happen. And it's just, you know, little steps. So that's what miracles are all about, you know? (laughs) That actually ties really well into the next thing that I like to ask everyone, because um, if a Juno were hiding in her bathroom just so she could eat a, ke- a cookie without having anybody know, you know, it's like the last Oreo and the <laughs> eat the damn thing. <laughs> no, and the kids are knocking on the door. Like if, if you were in that situation, what would you do right before you walked out? Because what I've started doing is I heard it somewhere, like asking the question when you're really like upset or stuck, why is my life so amazing right now? And it's like, even though like I might even be crying <laughs> or whatever, like I, and it's like, I ask that question and it instantly like gives me something to either be grateful for, or like right. once I get myself back together, it gives me an idea of if it's 11 o'clock in the morning, why is my day so amazing? Like it's because we went to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's just, you know, you have to look it, like, at it. Opens, it opens you up to the real answers. Like if you're saying like why is my life so depressing? You can come up with all the reasons in the world. Like, I know I can come up. Like if I sit there, I can find every reason in the world to be upset if I want to. But when you shift that, 
So you personally, is that, <laughs> what's your favorite way of handling, like to get yourself back from center in a stressful moment? My go-to is the breath. It's actually being aware of your breath because it, it, it kind of forces you, not kind of, it does, it forces you into the present moment. So when you stop and you go, breathe in and you hold it for three seconds and then breathe out for three seconds. It's the breath because it's the inner transformation of it all. And the breath is your connection to God, to source, to energy. And it's why we're still here. <laughs> you know, it, yes. it, it, it puts me into perspective, really. And then I'll take that Oreo cookie <laughs> and go, you know what? I am loved. I am hugged. I am gorgeous. Uh, you know, whatever you are so tempting, you are so delicious and just find all the good things about it and yourself, of course. And then, you know, you can walk out the door and, you know, just be, be deal with, you know, whomever is out, you know, on the other side of the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. We have a couple other things I'd like to touch on before we wrap up. You personally, if we haven't already touched on it, what is the most important thing that you feel like you've learned in your life and how your life changed in that before and after? I think it just goes back to one, loving myself, really loving myself, being in front of a mirror, nude, and go, you know what? You are beautiful. You are divine. You are gorgeous. There's beauty inside and out. I don't care if my breasts are sagging and my, and my, you know, tush is like getting flat or whatever it may be, <laughs> or I'm having like this tire around my stomach, <laughs> but you have to love every crease, everything about you. And, and that's, you know, that's it really, you know, just loving everything about you. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of a moment I had with my daughter recently. Like, oh, you <laughs> occasionally we do take showers together. It's just more efficient. Mm -hmm. And she's like, mom, why are your boobs kind of like, they don't look happy. And I was like, because I spent a year nursing you and making sure that you were strong and healthy and everything that you needed. And they did a beautiful thing, right? Right. <laughs> right. It's true. And you know what? You got to teach them from young. No, exactly. It, I'm very like want to make sure like when she said that, I was like, you know, that kind of like my body makes me happy and my body's done these beautiful things. So I don't appreciate. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Because there's a lot of body shaming, especially when you're young um, kids, maybe in school, whatever the case may be, maybe they're a little heavier, or overweight and, and there's a lot of competition and, and so forth. And you just gotta teach them when they're young, really. Mm -hmm. It's like love yeah, like for who you are. You know, you're unique. Yeah. I don't care if you have pink hair, blue hair, green hair. You know, you're beautiful just the way you are, girl. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and that's where I, the inner goddess comes in. <laughs> yes. Right? And I feel like it's. I've been trying a lot harder. Like I don't. I don't want her to think that I'm a superhero. Of course, I right. do want her to like you know, know that I'm allowed to be weak, but I'm trying to be much more aware of letting her see when I'm strong. That's right. Yeah. Maybe something did break me a little bit in that moment, but I've got it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And it's good to show your vulnerabilities, right? Mm -hmm. Because and that's what makes you stronger. Like, I don't want to be, like, I do love that she thinks I'm like this superhero mom, but like, <laughs> I don't want to, like, I want to be the real person like <laughs> the superhero makes it sound like it's impossible and unattainable like <laughs> I love and, that. um, there is something that I want to share with um you it's um what I consider the 10 goddess commandments may I Ooh. yes you may I was actually going to say my last question is what have I asked or should have asked you that you I didn't think about <laughs> we're on the same wavelength <laughs> I love it. Okay, so the first so, yeah. one, celebrate your unique beauty, both inner and outer. 
honor yourself in every choice you make. Dare to be spontaneous and authentic. I'm telling you, I don't care if you have pink, green, blue hair. I don't, if you have piercing and tattoos, you are yourself, you know, you are authentic. Spend equal time being and reflecting, giving, receiving, honor the divine and all. I love that. Yes, I have a vanity. Um, I like have a vanity where you know I kind of get myself together and whatnot, and I put all kinds of inspirational things. Like the first thing I put up was actually my partner. He got it for me. It's a Bob Ross picture. Like it looks oh. like Bob Ross, but it's like one of his happy little tree paintings, and underneath it says "Happy Painting." And I like that to be my vibe <laughs> for my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I also have like quotes about like, you know, the intuition or because I am very empathic, I have, is this your shit written on the mirror? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. But I think I'm going to have to print out these oh, goddess like commandments and put them somewhere. <laughs> My kids are four five and six. So sometimes oh, there's just so sweet. much chaotic energy mm-hmm. and there's chaotic happiness, but there's also like... I I hold on to stuff that I know is not mine. And I've recently learned that. Right. (laughs) Like I know now that it's not mine, Mm -hmm. but I have to remind myself, what are you feeling? Like, is this yours truly? Because if it's not, let it go. Like get it it. out of here. That's it. Let it go. Let the bleep go. And that's what it is. (laughs) Yeah. Because that's what it is. Those are emotions, right? And so what I, it's like emotions, it's energy in motion. So any emotion that you have inside, just let it go. Because if not, like I said earlier, it's just going to be placed somewhere in your body. Don't worry. It's just going to manifest itself little by little. So you don't want that shit to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last up, I enjoyed our conversation. And thank, thank you so you. much. So thank just you. go ahead and let all of our listeners know like where they can find you, reach out, your website, all the goodies. Yes, yeah, so my website is spiritual journey 17, the number one seven dot com, or you are spiritual journey.com, which is you are spiritual journey.com. And I reduce my prices for the next month or two. So you guys come in, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyone, anyone. <laughs> no, I grew up like I am in Maryland now, but I grew up in Massachusetts. It's and my dad was from New York. It's the thing. Like, New York. <laughs> Did you hear my, you hear my yeah, tone? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> so if anyone emails me or emails me and say, you know what? I listen to your Juno podcast. I'll give you an additional $25 off. Oh, doesn't matter. Beautiful. Thank you. Is that awesome? Because I, I just saw Oprah Winfrey right now saying, and you, and you, and you, you got $25 additional. <laughs> and um, on my website, so I am a blogger, as you mentioned earlier. And on my blog, or on my website, if you will, I have, you know, the Instagram and the Facebook and my YouTube videos. If you want to check out, you know, a couple of the hypnosis sessions, you know, what goes on. The latest one that happened, um, somebody was a... Well, the the whale frequency came through, and the dolphin oh. frequency came through. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. yeah, and and she was also a pixie, little fairy. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so oh, much for awesome. sharing everything. Thank and you, and I appreciate you, you so much for being a part of this. Oh, I appreciate you for asking me. Well, we have so much in common. I <laughs> <See know. that>? <laughs> <laughs> enjoyed our conversation. This episode in particular ended up being far more personal than I ever expected. Bernice and I had never spoken to each other before this conversation, outside of my asking, but it was quickly evident that there was so much more in our lives that tied us together and that we mirrored each other in a way. Our stories, our heritage, it all took me by surprise in a way that I was not ready for. It is the kind of connection that I strive to make with you, Juno. The kind of connections I want us to make with each other. A beautiful exchanging of energy between us all to raise the vibration of the whole. So, thank you for being a part of it. 
Also, a million thank yous to Bernice for speaking with me. If you are interested in working with Bernice yourself, which I highly recommend and intend on doing again, maybe next time I'll share if it's not that deep, I will be posting links on my website, social media, and in the show notes. I was also inspired to create an image of her goddess commandments, so you can find that everywhere as well. If you want the latest episodes as soon as they come out, please remember to subscribe. If you'd like to be part of the Juno community, reach out with feedback, or be a part of the show, you can find Junos and Shadow on Facebook and Instagram at Junos and Shadow, or visit junosandshadow.com. Until next time, stay strong, goddess.